Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Thank you for joining us here at The H, an honest conversation about health, hemp, and happiness. We are, <clears throat> excuse me, we are very honored today. We have a special guest that's going to be coming on in a little bit. Uh, but for right now, we're jumping into how everybody's doing, catching up really quick. Uh, we've heard of the California wildfires. Unfortunately, I did not know about these until about like a minute and a half ago. Uh, we now have the Ohio wildflower up there. Like, uh, how you doing, buddy? Fire, 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 fire. fire. I am yeah. great, Brandon. It was a beautiful day today. It was cold, but it was sunny and looked like it was seventy degrees. Yep, I agree. That's all. All of a sudden, I hear Joe typing. It threw me off for a second. I was no, like, typing. no typing. No I typing. Putting my, I was putting my delight in. Getting ready. I just, I have mine right here. Make it easy. Mine's right here. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed real easy. <laughs> Yep, Gerald's got a big game. So my uh, Gerald's is right behind him. So my light is now completely under the desk. That couldn't have gone uh, any better. I need to text Brian, tell him to clip and edit that and save that moment. Oh, uh, that was funny. It's as easy as A B. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. All right, so I'm back. Um, but Gerald, what you been up to lately, buddy? How you doing? How's how's everything going? Getting ready for the ne your next big uh fight your next you have one coming up in and i don't know i haven't talked to you in a while me neither i don't know either so we um uh, we're looking at april and we're talking to a few organizations i'm training as always getting ready for the next thing and other than that blog blog all the above all the same shit um pouring time into that and uh trying to serve you guys the best i can you did hear i didn't pause you in the porn right no, <laughs> I, I really, it was, I heard that wrong and I was like, what did so he I, say? I knew uh, what he said, but I was like, I, I was like, he really, um, he did not uh, catch it, what it sounded like. No, no, I have no idea. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. You literally went so fast through everything. All of a sudden you said, and, pa and porning time. And I was, like, laugh. Just, I was like, does he say he has to schedule his time for porn? I'm oh, like, yeah. that was. I loved it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I was like, hey, I feel like wait, Gerald would anyway. So it's fantastic. That was just the universe trying to get the truth out. I mean, you can't just <laughs> do it while the significant other is in the next room. You got to be careful. That is true. Yeah. That yeah. is scary. I mean, unless you are there's family or kids around. Yeah, I mean, unless oh you're as quiet as a mouse, I mean, it's it sounds like an elephant and a tiger are fighting when I'm going at it. So, and the eye of the tiger. <laughs> I I want like an impression, but I don't want an impression at the same time. You you don't want an impression. I'll, this is on video, and I'll probably go to jail for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I see our guest in the back shaking his head, like, "Please don't do an impression. Please don't do an yeah. impression." Oh, <laughs> uh, for that. I'm glad. I'm glad. So we have a fun episode planned today, guys. Uh, we actually, what would your name be from Brian Fluke? Your porn Ginger name. Thor. Ginger oh. Thor. That's all. What's your porn name, Gerald? Or I'm sorry, Ohio yeah. Wildfire. Oh, I think I like that as a porn it's name. It's on the screen. <laughs> it's on the screen. That would mean I would never be able to cut any of my hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Well I, a plus on that joke. A plus on that joke. Wow. Top um, top so top bunk there. Yeah. So we uh, have, we're going to talk a lot today about, we're bringing in a special guest. He is an entrepreneur. He is one of a kind. He is someone that I met through Gerald because Gerald was at a practice and I came to watch him spar and he turns around and like we just bonded and guys i'm excited to bring him in and uh, this is jerome give him a round of applause hey it's jerome how are you my friend actually today i can say that things are going well um like i stated uh, we had like a little stressful time for a while trying to get this fight locked down. Some opponents 
and just the, just this whole process entering into this phase. I've never been here before, so you know it was a stress. But uh, I think today, with the new contract signed and everything's locked and loaded, I mean, we can take a short hiatus, get some rest, get ready. I love it. I love it. So uh, tell everybody where the fight's going to be and who your fighter is so we can make sure we shout them out and, and give them uh, some recognition to go watch the fight. Indeed. Well, it's Antoine the Giant Slayer Phillips. He's from Cleveland, Ohio, directly. He was 7-0 and as an amateur with five titles. And he'll be making his pro debut for, it's called uh, Strike Hard Productions, which is a B2 production, B2 promotion. And we're going to be in, I think it's pronounced Tuxville, Alabama, T-U-C-C, Tuck, Tuxville, Alabama. But we're supposed to be down there on the 23rd so it's supposed to be a go and then we're locked and loaded i love it so tell me how you and gerald have met, uh, know each other well we met that day so i had actually i was invited the day that you and i met myself gerald met uh aleska uh, i think his name is jeff hughes i was invited by bishop bishop savage he invited me. He was like, yo, you want to go down to strong style? And I had never been too strong style. And the way that I always reference strong style, I always say the champs house, you know, so that's how I talk about it. I've been to a few of the gyms. Uh, Matt Brown has a fight. He's at Immortal. Uh, one of our guys, DJ, he's got a fight coming. He's fighting for Titan. And, you know, I haven't been to the champs house. So he's like, yeah, you know, I'm going. And I'm like, yo, I'm in. So we go in. I, I'm, I'm like a kid in a candy store, dude. Like these dudes are, these are some of the biggest men in the world. And for anyone who enjoys violence, this is violence <laughs> at, you know, at its most supreme level. So this is the Mecca in Ohio right now. So I go in, I see the belt, the belt's like 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. I see the weight room. It's got if you can think of lifting weights, it's in there. Uh, they've got like these little private rooms. Guys come out after getting their ass kicked. They've got cages. They've got uh, masseuse tables. Like this is like high level kick your ass shit. You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and then uh, I sit down and of course I met you and we had, we kicked it off. We had a good time. Great conversation. I think we've been cool ever since just uh, crossing paths again. It's just been scheduling. But myself and Gerald, uh, we have a mutual friend and it's little Drew. That's, that's like one of my favorite dudes on the planet right now. Uh, met him through a few of the guys at Aerie. So I knew him before I met Gerald. So he and I was building a relationship and I would see him in the pictures and everything, but hadn't met him until that day. So as far as uh, meeting Gerald, I met him that day, but I think it's been a hit ever since, man. That's, that's my guy. Uh, Meg was incredible meeting her as well. Those two, uh, they- Aren't they adorable? I, yeah, technically yes. Technically <laughs> yes. But but we we know who's kicking the ass. Oh know? my god, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, oh, definitely. Hey, hey, I'm gonna put up a great fight every time. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. You're supposed That's to you you're supposed to and you're supposed to go out swinging. Yeah, right. Right. And, uh, you got me this time. I yes, guess. I lied. yes, yeah. yes. Oh, that's funny. Meg is one of a kind too. Uh, we we did the IV thing with her once, and uh, the workout. Gerald did a workout and all that, and she was there. She was killing me. It was the first time I actually got to hang out with her a little bit around and all that. She's amazing. I could see why she like why Gerald likes her, but I, why she likes I, Gerald. I'm still wondering. Brandon, I wouldn't have done that. So they recently had a boxing match in the city where some of the people that we knew went. And then I found out from them that they had like this little lady who was out there kicking ass. So when I went to the Instagram, I found out that it was Meg. Cause remember, I don't, I don't know Meg. I just, I just have sent some products before and I see yeah. her and I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, that little lady, 
And yeah, so you be careful working out with them, dude. Be careful. I don't know. I only did it once. Only once. Right. I, 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 I went once to watch Gerald and learn, and he goes, oh, did you bring your gi? And I'm like, I don't know what that is. So pajamas. I, a gi is yeah, pajamas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, apparently I have a Ninja Turtle one now that my parents got me so I'm like excited to wear it. it's more of a bathrobe but I'm still going to claim it's my gi it works. So, it works but I went to go watch Gerald once and he's like you can join in I sat in a corner like a child I was like there's no way I'm getting in there with these guys like there's so many people and he's like no 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 come on work out like, no 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 I can't Like, did you, did you actually put a gi on uh, not at that one, but I have put a gi on in the past. Yeah. Well, as long as you understand not to put a black belt on, that's like a <laughs> no, like seriously, like it's like a ritualistic thing. If you have not earned a black belt, there's like bad karma involved with that. So never, never do that around traditional martial artists, man. It's bad news. Really, I did not know that. That's pretty interesting. So yeah, that's that's an omen. That's like wearing I, like a Hell's, uh, Hell's Angels patch and not being truly patched. Not check, check. You're don't be an imposter. Yep. I like that. I, I I I like the way you put that. Like now, all I can picture is the Hell's Angels. You know. So <laughs> don't wear your D around them either. <laughs> oh, so Jerome, you own your own business, and I have to be honest. I love my present. You gave me what you make, and tell everybody a little bit about these, so that way we can t send them over to. Black rose mm. petals from a black rose. There yes. There, yes, yes. So we you see, I stopped. You did well. You did well. You did well. So okay. we made we make bath and body products. So we started off with a couple blends of soap. Um, the ladies like body butters. So there are certain things that I directly don't touch too often. The bath bombs really suck, excuse me, because they come off a press and she's always getting on me about the fact that they like, they've got like these little engravings. So, oh, you have one, right. One of the I, CBD bath bombs. I do. I'm smelling it as we speak. Yes. Okay. Right. So they, it's got like these little engravings on there because it comes out of a, a hand press. So in packaging, you know, I'm a man, so I can only be so delicate with the things that I have directly. It's not like passing a baby, you know? So um, there's another product that I really hate. It's called a sugar scrub. Uh, you'll find out ladies use that for the most part, like on the, the heels of their feet, elbow, shoulder. So it's directly made to help uh, exfoliate. So though there are certain products that like I just don't do, but as far as like the combat soap, which is our sports bar, the heavy loaves of soap based on the blends and the cooking, I prefer to do the majority of that. So we're a bath and body business. Um, we try to stay as natural as possible. Do we have to use preservatives at different times, especially in shipping? Of course. So any company that tells you that they don't use a preservative is probably not telling you the truth. Yeah. Because if, you know, if I, if I make some soap today, there's a curing process. And outside of the curing process, which could be, let's just say from two to six weeks at a maximum. So at the six week point, when everything is ready, curing means that the, the excess water is leaving the product and I got to ship the product, then I may have to use a preservative just for the shelf life for it to get to you. That, well, because you want to keep it to the longest it can, uh, that you can preserve it. So what got you into soap? To be totally honest, um, I was looking for a separate hustle. Uh, I like that. I respect that. You, you know, just to keep it real, different things go on as far as uh, working jobs, uh, kids getting older, people are trying to start uh, home-based mom and pop type businesses, you know, to try to sustain. We're dealing with a you know, different things I don't want to mention. <laughs> right now, the world is different. Yeah. So if you cannot find ways with whatever the currency is to sustain, then you're at the mercy of someone else consistently. So 
I was looking for a separate hustle. I was working at Ford. Uh, for the most part, we do well. And I also have a cleaning business. I have a contract with university hospitals. So I had that. But, you know, as the kids started to get older, uh, I pretty much enjoyed combat sports forever. So going into the sports, you know, I, I stopped wanting to just be a fan. I wanted to be involved. So we started off with being a sponsor, you know, but I wasn't making much money being a sponsor. I'm just paying everybody, you know, hey, can I put my logo on your ass? You know? <laughs> that's how I that's how I met Gerald. I walked up and said, can I please have my logo on your ass? He right, said, it's already right. taken. So, right. Right. No, because that's what we did. Like anytime like we deal with the guys, like when they're doing their shorts, like today, I want cheek to cheek on their ass. I don't want. <laughs> Gerald <laughs> you know? had to, so Gerald had to explain to me why that is the most prime location, because I'm sitting there going, well, the, pants, <laughs> the shorts. And, oh, no, that's fascinating to me. Like I like you yeah. knew that. So praise you, man. I like I love that you knew that already. So yeah, we were we see, were directly operating in that space. And uh, but I'll, I'll take it back here briefly. When it came to the making of the soap, uh, we come from a generational uh, of growers. So individuals who were growing their own food uh, agriculturally for quite some time. We had actually got some recipes from one of our elders, found out that this was not a recipe for food. It was a recipe for soap. So we actually got some of the ingredients and fired up the crock pot and started that time making our own soap. And we that is doing awesome. Go ahead. That, you know, so how many times did you have to eat something and be like, oh, that doesn't taste right before you realized you were making soap? Uh, to, to be totally honest, I'll, I'll be honest twice. That's I I love thank you. I love the honesty because you know what? You didn't know. And you guys were literally trying something new and then you figure out you have something different and now look where you're at. Like two mistakes. I go ahead, Gerald. I see you. Go, buddy. I was just gonna say I fucking knew there was a reason why I'm getting ready to use this watermelon soap. <laughs> and I I know it's soap and I smell it. And I go, oh man, I'm gonna eat some soap today. Like <laughs> that shit smelled so good. I texted Jerome. I was like, dude, this stuff is too good. I just took a bite out of your bar of soap. <laughs> <laughs> That's my. We there's a there's a couple guys who ask at different times on the Instagram just to be funny, just based on some of the names. Like, can they eat the soap? And yeah. what I what I tell them is, I said, listen, if there is truly a zombie apocalypse coming. And like we're crossing over some point in the equator and this is what we have to eat. Yes, we'll make it. But right now, you don't have to do that. You have better options. <laughs> right. You don't have to do that. This is taking eating in the shower to the next level, though. Don't do it. I, I, don't, I can't recommend that. Why do you have to say that? <laughs> I just want some pizza. And, oh, pizza. I've done that. So. I don't want to distract. I know I can make everybody laugh, but I, I, I want to be able to let you really talk about Jerome and what you're doing because I really am like honored that you got to come on today, buddy. You are a great human being, and every time I see you, it's more and more fun. So I wanted to get your story out there for people to hear. Uh, I, I love how you came up with soap, and it only took two times um, of eating something that you thought was um, soup and to turn it into soap. I love it. Um, why is your soap different from anybody else's soap? Why should people want to get your soap? And then on top of that, can they get it? Where can they get it? Like buying it. All right. So what makes my soap different would probably be, we're just going to be completely honest and break it down to its lowest compound. The connection to the people. I think, I think that that's important. Uh, I think you and I had discussed this briefly. You you were stating that uh, at the end of the aisle in Walmart that you wanted your products to be one of the boxes where people could directly like, yo, OK, so on my way out, let me grab a couple of the uh, individual packets for my afternoon or mm -hmm. in between workouts and different things like that. And you was 
when you asked me, you said, well, isn't that something that you aspire to do when you were asking me? And I said, from a technical scale, yeah, every single business wants to be at the biggest conglomerates. And that's just honest. Yeah, I would like to have the billboards and uh, the commercials, you know, the Geico lizard. And, you know, of course, we would all want that. But if I actually converted and worked to do that, I would lose my connection with the people. I wouldn't I wouldn't see Gerald. I wouldn't be able to be here talking to you right now because of the manufacturing process. I've worked in manufacturing and I've seen the way that certain things go when you're it. Yes, it is a process of elevation. I respect it. But. I want to go to the fights. I want to touch the fighters. I want um, I want a pair of Gerald's gloves and I don't want them sent to me my P.O. box because I can't take phone calls because I'm uh, the, the national distribution place. I want to touch the people. So but what makes this so different is everything is directly handcrafted. Uh, we work with a company called Essential Depot, and we only work with therapeutic grade essential oils. So if you pay attention to some of my posts, I'm actually speaking to my competitors when I say, I don't know what they use. We only use therapeutic grade essential oils. So, you know, I'm actually speaking to my competitors directly. I think that it's very important for when dealing with my products, our products, that we're a very transparent business. Uh, there's a 1-800 number on every single item that you buy in a large chain store. You have no idea who you're going to talk to. So let's keep it real. When you call the numbers for Petals from a Black Rose, you're going to speak to us directly. I think that customer service, we want to go above and beyond consistently for the people that enjoy our products. So when you say what makes us different, well, I'm sitting right here right now. I, I, I make the soap, I package the soap, I ship the soap, we infuse the oils. Uh, in many, many cases, even we've had some of the fighters come out and help cut some things. And so they've seen some processes. So it's a very I guess you could use the term organic uh, street level would be out the mud, you know, directly. So it's, it's something that you could touch. Like uh, to be honest, my favorite soap of all time is Irish spring. And I have no problem with saying that I like that, that smell. It was always powerful. The green, uh, the original, and then they had, they got a sport bar aloe that I didn't like much, but then there's a blue bar. Mm -hmm directly. So I wanted to, uh, I, I, I love them as a company, but I can't call Irish Spring and say, yo, I'm getting low. Why? Because I could go to any local market now based on warehousing and I could see it sitting right there. There's no exclusivity in that. And when you buy something from Petals from a Black Rose, like you you have an exclusive mm -hmm. product directly. I'm not saying that everyone can have it, but when you have it, you have an exclusive product. Uh, when Meg used the soap, I was so glad that he had posted the, uh, we sent her a few of the loofah soaps yep. and we make everything based on the calendar. So people will call and they'll be like, yo, um, I need such and such. Well, based on the calendar, based on the rotation, I don't have that, but I have these other options. Try that. The feedback is incredible on the Etsy. So I think we still have a five-star rating. That's so, awesome. Go ahead. So I have a question. Why does this one smell like butt? Is that the butt? Yeah, that's the butt. I don't know what you've done directly. I, <laughs> it yeah, smells when, really when, weird. When, when, I got it, when I got it, it smelled normal. I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, so this I don't is know what you've done. This no, is that's not, that, that is actual food. You now should, wait. You should no, that. that's that's not food. And maybe right. maybe you should wash your hands that's if you're eating it all day. Calorie. Wash your hands. <laughs> so you said I could eat these in the shower. How yeah. edible is this in the shower? <laughs> I think, listen, I, I think you know the difference between toxic and food. <laughs> that's so, not food. I, you gave it to me because we talked about, about how I'm always spinning things and I'm an asshole. So I think this is funny. I can now squish my ass all day and not have anybody know anything. Yep. 
<laughs> Jerome, now, uh, you have Brandon. Oh, have, can we put Jerome's website directly in the chat? Because um, I was actually pulling up to browse myself because you two have gotten to try Jerome's soap. I would love to as well, um, just because I want to get into the more organics, more natural soaps myself. So I wanted to pull that up. But uh, can we throw the link in the chat for everybody? If, yeah. Uh, do you want me to do it? How do I do it? I I got you because I know you're on your phone. It's just the petals from a black rose, correct? Petals from a black rose dot com. Okay, thank it should you. Be, it should be that simple. You got it, guys. You have to interview him while I type all this. No problemo. That went well. Mm, yeah, the transition smooth. <laughs> so um, I was looking down at. So why did you say that? So do the CBD uh, bombs suck just because of what you were talking about in terms of like? packaging and handling with Karen's and stuff because I actually have used them and I I thought they were pretty fucking good to be honest with you. No, I was just saying directly just the process of uh, me and my lady working together. So, okay, it's made in a large batch and yep. then for it to get that design, it comes off of a hand press. Mm -hmm. So then it'll cure itself and then it'll get really hard, especially if it has embeds inside of it. And when I'm packaging that design, sometimes I can't, I, I don't have the steadiest of hand when it comes to just the design, the intricacy, like it's got like the little thing, yeah. the little frilly, yeah, it's real yeah. frilly at the top. So she's always hollering and screaming, be yeah. careful, don't knock the edges off, and you gotta yeah. watch the edges. And, and, but as far as the actual product, though, I believe mm -hmm. it is a great product. Yeah. I was just giving a reference to the things that I personally don't like to make myself that we make. Got it. That's awesome. Uh, so where can people find you other than just online? Are they able to find you? What's like, do you have stores you're located at? We we're in multiple stores. Our studio is in North Ridgeville on center Ridge road. So when I say studio, we like to keep it as a sterile environment as possible. So if you saw one of the videos where we had drew in there, he had to wear an apron uh, hairnet. Um, Gerald called him Granny Smith or the old lunch lady. So there could, I only prefer so many people in there at one time. We're actually getting a separate office in that same building to where my office will move. But the, but the actual place where we make the products will stay the same. But uh, there's a store called uh, Healing Peridium in Euclid, Ohio, East 222nd. They carry our products. Uh, there's a store called Ashe, A-S-E, in Blue Ash, Ohio, that carry our products. Also, Goddess Elite, which is in North Olmstead, right off Stearns and Crocker. They carry our products as well. So, yeah, we're around. I love it. I love it. Guys, go check them out. Don't forget, check out Petals from a Black Rose. Uh, I see Maritia's here. And I love to see you. She's a chef that works on another show with us. She's great. And then they found your Etsy link and threw it up there as well for everybody. So, guys, go check out the Etsy link. Uh, thank you, Fernando, for grabbing that and throwing that in there, buddy. I couldn't help. I couldn't be more grateful. Um, and I, yes. And then I saw uh, uh, I saw the comments about people throwing up your website and all that too. So, guys, thank you very much for jumping in there like that. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Joe. I, I know you were going to say something. So oh, I um, pulled it up as well. That's why when you said transition, I was looking at, I was just, uh, you know, looking through everything. I was like, uh, 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 I think the one that catches my eye is the Mercury Retrograde Body Wash. So if I'm going to ask about a specific product, because I know you already talked about some of those, what is that a little bit? Just because from my own personal interest, and I'm sure some people in the chat looking at it, um, that looks really unique. Are you aware of what the Mercury Retrograde represents? Nope. Just looks awesome. And I clicked it. Then I'm going to get uh, technic well, some people would say that it's in line with astrology okay. because we also have a spiritual line of products as well, which we call them directly spiritual tools. So like the, the Mercury retrograde itself represents, <clears throat> excuse me, it's supposed to represent new beginnings, door openings, um, things that you ask to be reciprocated to you from the universe directly. 
So the mercury retrograde body wash, you would use that during the time when you're actually putting out good things into the atmosphere. We have individuals like based, based on feedback. Um, we've, we all have bad days. Yep. And um, we all have those times where the energy could be different than we would like for it to be for us to be productive. Well, one of the things that we forget to do is take a bath, take a hot shower during some of those times. Like I've watched some of the mental health shows of uh, from Brandon and the other people that he had on. And one of the things that some people really forget is to take a se- take a step back, maybe light a candle, you know, on yeah. the and, and actually try to reflect, go inside a little bit directly to say, you know, hey, these things happened. I can work through these things and then maybe take a hot shower. So we have a select line of products directly to aid in that process also. That's awesome. I mean, I'm glad I happened to pick that product drone just because uh, it, it gave everybody like a really cool explanation into why you have that line of products and why it's different and just shows as like you said, you like to be connected to the people. It just shows like another area you like to connect with. It's just not about soap. It has a meaning behind it that travels farther into their life. So I think that's awesome. Thank you. So, Jerome, you're a busy man. How do you keep yourself going through the day? Like, do you use coffee, energy drinks? Like, how do you get yourself going? To be honest, uh, the majority of my work is done in the evening. So, uh, let me see. I think Drew knows. A couple of guys that I deal with directly, they know usually I'll crash from like one in the afternoon roughly until about three every day. Three, four o'clock, I'll just crash. Because I'm up all night, whether it be packaging, marketing, uh, dealing with some things from the business. Coffee, yes. Sometimes, uh, you know, coffee is always a laxative. So let's just be honest. Anytime you got to take a dump, you're going to be awake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, some, sometimes when I return oh. home from the road, though, I'll be totally honest, man. I, I need a stiff drink when I've been driving all day. Oh, yeah. You know, just to get yeah. through the day. Yeah. Did you so, know? Go ahead. Oh no. Um, the actual thing that I've been implementing a little bit, which you may enjoy, is the delight CBD. <laughs> yeah. I did not set this up, but I love hearing that. No, you no, you did not. You did not. Uh, and I'll be honest. So the products that we initially had were for some of the people that we care about that were looking for other things. Like you know, everyone can't smoke. Um. Yeah of some of the waters, they're not, the, the waters claim to be one way and we could be honest, but it, it's really not providing anything other than water. So different times, yeah, I do use the Delight CBD. I love it, I love it. Well, all right, so just because you did that, I'm gonna ask, do you have a, a something that you prefer to put it in, whether it be coffee or do you like to put it like just in anything like water and stuff as you're going through your day i put it in v8 you are my first v8 i love it thank you i love it so that's a a fact i get the uh i don't i can't do the 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 standard can of the v8 uh because of the amount of salt so i get that i think it's like eight like half cans the, the smaller cans. So, you know, yeah. you have to shake, you have to shake it up really good to get the salt out of there. And then I'll throw the delight CBD right in there and I'll just bang it. I love it. Um, so you're all about health and wellness and you're about taking care of yourself. I, I, we've talked about that and you've talked about it even with how you make your soap and everything, making sure you're using the best stuff. Uh, tonight, last week we had a conversation. So you're having fun with us now. You're coming for a joy ride. Are you ready, Jerome? I'm, 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 I'm locked in, man. I love it. Here we go. So, uh, we are, we started talking about energy drinks and pops and all these other things. And it, we were talking about the sugars in it and how bad these things are for you. And doing just a little research, we were able to pull up things that showed that the United States government, the military, has actually put a ban on some energy drinks. Did you know that? 
Did, did I know it personally? No, but I, I do know since you mentioned that, that probably 75 to 85 percent of the ingredients in a lot of products that we digest are banned in other countries. Elaborate on that. Can you give me a great example of something like that? You can take the floor on that one. No, well, I don't I don't have one with me now, but all you have to do is look at the ingredients and catch up. Every, everybody, for the most part, loves ketchup. And as a standard, uh, there are certain things that are supposed to go in. We talked about that briefly with the products. But there are restaurants in the UK, they will not put anything in the ketchup but tomatoes and salt. <laughs> yep. yep. Like, the, the, like the same brand. It's the same brand, same company, same logo. But in other countries, it's a completely different product because of what we do to our product. Coca-Cola, great example of that. In America, there's all these other fake sugars, fake chemicals, all this stuff. And then you turn around and you get a Coke in Mexico and it's actually made with better stuff. That's what amazes me. Uh, Maurizia has a question for you. Do you have any soaps that will strengthen sensitive skin? Which is a great question. So your skin has multiple layers. Okay, the sensitive, the sensitivity of your skin, there's a fallacy out here. One of the fallacies in skincare directly is that there's a such thing as too much sun. Well, the reason that you're being harmed by the sun is you're not directly using the things to protect your skin because the sun actually provides vitamin D, which uh, your bones need, your teeth need, your eyes need. So there's no such thing as too much sun. So when you say a product directly to strengthen your skin, well, you want to bathe directly and you want to just consistently moisturize your skin with good products. So you want to moisturize with a lotion, body butter. There are actually some products that contain a CBD based on the healing of what is called as a dermatitis. Okay. Uh, Gerald being in combat sports understands what a dermatitis is. It's a fungus. Uh, eczema is actually a fungus. You can heal an eczema by directly taking and treating it with good products. Now, I can never say that my products heal. So as long as we understand that I can never say that, but all natural products will contribute to the healing of a dermatitis. I did not know that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I like that. And actually, I don't know if you could see the comments. She actually said, yes, I have that. So that works out perfectly. Uh, I see your soaps are... Or use our soap with an evening prime rose, prim rose. Yeah, uh, that's probably Lachelle, my uh, partner in rhyme at the time. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a very intricate level of essential oils and natural herbs that we use. So anything that we use in our products, we would actually appreciate it if the consumer was willing to look it up. So it's not a situation. It's We're not used car salesmen and no disrespect. You got to get your money. You need your job. You do what you do. But if I tell you that something is in my product, the, the consumer has the ability to investigate that and make an educated decision. That's funny you say that because we are we had people tuning in tonight to talk about the energy drink stuff as well. And uh, Joe, you were you and I were talking backstage about the articles about how we don't even understand what's in some of these things. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, the point I brought up, and um, I know Gerald will be pretty familiar with this, and Jerome, I'm sure being around a lot of writers, <laughs> uh, you've seen this too. So I was talking to Brandon how, you know, pre-workouts used to always be powder form, right? And then now you see them in the cans. So for people who don't know in the workout industry or fighting industry, they call those an RTD, ready to drink. And that could come in protein, amino acids, you know, a recovery drink, whatever. It just means you can pop a tab and drink it. So those, because they're stronger, they're normally pretty easy to see the caffeine content on like a Celsius, like, like a bang. Um, it says like 300 milligrams or like total war, 300 milligrams. But if you go to the store and get like a monster or a Red Bull, and I was, it took me some research for a Red Bull, which it shouldn't have, to find the caffeine intake. 
and it's way, way, way at the bottom. And then other brands that, you know, it mixes with taurine and they have like all these formulated breakdowns. And in a weird way, it's like they make it really, really hard to figure that out. I was telling Brandon, the only reason I discovered this on my own, because normally I don't care, but I should, is um, I had like a very low grade pre-workout one day and I was working 10 hours at the time and kind of crashing. And I was like, you know, I need another energy drink because I don't like coffee. And I was like, but I don't want something strong because I already had like 150 milligrams. And that's when I first discovered when you go to the gas station, it's sometimes harder to find that caffeine milligram content that you're looking for than it should be. Or you're okay. So were you did you want me to speak on it or Gerald? Oh yeah. no, no, no. No, it's oh, just no, I could like do it. the point how difficult it is for people and how these energy drink companies really try to camouflage the actual caffeine intake. And uh, the reason we are getting into this, and this will tie into um, you know, the restrictions on energy drinks and how you know certain countries in the world are looking at banning them for certain ages, of how they camouflage that and kind of make it, you know very hard for people to tell how much caffeine they're about to put in their body based well, on based on a lot of a lot of the regulations okay so let's just call them regulations right right now this is 2021 but you could pretty much say coming off of 2010 they don't they're, they're working inside to where they don't have to place certain ingredients on the packaging anymore they just don't have to do it. There are certain codes and uh, in other places, they be they may be violations. But the way that these companies work is they're allowed to pencil whoop you. Um, if you understand being pencil whooped, um, everybody's had a court case, right? And you see big companies do it all the time. They have the money to constantly file the paperwork that you can. And that's whether you're right or wrong. Like you could be completely right. But the fact that you cannot continue, you cannot sustain this fight with these companies based on the amount of resources that they have for their objective. These companies, the reasons that they're hiding those things directly, if you actually knew what was in there, they wouldn't make any money. <laughs> no. Or, or what, they, what they do to you. And, and that's and that's a point too. So when you spoke of energy drink, let's just talk about really what happens. Okay. When seriously, and and this would be a good conversation that a lot of young men and women, no matter what field that you're in, it's something that everybody should really pay attention to. When you think you're taking an energy drink, it's doing nothing other than speeding up your metabolism and contributing to blood pressure. So it allows you to do what you think you need energy to do, which you're supposed to supplement with fresh fruits and vegetables because it's sitting right there. But look at the convenience of opening a can of any, I'm not going to say any names, just opening this can, taking a few sips, my heart rate is up. Um, I get my little droplets of sweat and I'm ready to go shovel some more, or carry the shingles back up and down. Look at the convenience of that than sitting on the side, missing a few minutes from work and peeling an orange. Well, I don't have time to do that. So these companies directly recognize what's going on in the landscape of business and marketing. Hey, take this energy drink that's advertised for so many hours. Take this and you'll get this many hours of what. Well, well, how can you equate that anyway? There's the, the, it's impossible for certain things to be an exact science. You know why? Gerald is roughly 180 pounds, right? I have a fighter who's 265 pounds. Gerald might need more of something based on the content. So when you mention the milligrams, it's impossible for it to be an exact science because both of their chemical makeup and their body mass index is completely different. But these companies directly know that if they put enough of this substance in here, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah. Right. If yeah, you're right. sitting there like right. shaking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is you know, I, I think the uh, the big like the the big thing you just totally overlook is the fact that energy drinks are shortcuts, really. Indeed. And 
you can take a shortcut every once in a while, but if you make a habit of taking shortcuts, shit falls apart. It's like with anything else. So, you know, my thing is, is like, you know, you get in the habit of taking shortcuts and you're not going to have a, a very strong foundation for whatever you're trying to do. When, when you think about some of those types of things too, let's be clear. So they always speak about alcohol, right? So let's talk about alcohol briefly. Oh, it's bad for your kidneys, your liver, uh, your esophagus, your intestines. There's no difference. The only difference with those uh, drinks is the fact that you don't need to consume as much, but it's still doing the same amount of damage to the body directly because in your mind, you're processing it to get through something. You said something that's important, a shortcut. I need a quick fix. Now, you know, when you sit down and you have a beer, you're not looking for a quick fix. You want to sit down. You want to relax. It's a chilling factor. It is. That's the difference. That's why I said it's not going to raise your blood pressure to the amount of what this is going to do, because that's all that's happening. You ingest this stuff into your body. It's it's like putting a, a synthetic oil in your vehicle. They call it viscosity. Mm -hmm. So that's what's not. Yeah, that's what it's just happening very quickly. That's all. So instead of getting the good glucose, the good fats, the good sugars from fruits and vegetables, you're just going to get everything right now. It's just a rush. Just give it to me right now. Yeah, I love it. Like you and just I, explained uh, that so well. You well, explained that so learned, well. Uh, to piggyback on what you said, I learned this being in the fitness industry and being around a lot of personal trainers is especially when people talk about pre-workouts, right? Because they want that rush before their, their pump or their lift. And uh, well, the one trainer said to me, and I, this is something I knew, and I just got in the habit of drinking pre-workouts all the time. You should really do one month on, one month off at most, you know, and uh, or really you go buy one or you have the powder at home. And then maybe on like a really tired day once in a while, you, you know, you add it to a smoothie or you do it and you drink it. And so a long time ago, I used to have a lot of stomach problems because of pre-workouts, mm -hmm. especially the powders. I had to get an endo done and they thought I had Crohn's and bleeding ulcers. And mm -hmm. the doctor's like, stop drinking the damn pre-workouts. So what I did is kind of something Maritza was talking about where she gave a suggestion earlier about a power food or superfood is I started doing blueberries and kale every morning in a smoothie for a full month. And I, I didn't have a pre-workout again. Unfortunately, I'm back on them. But uh, I got the same amount of energy. It just took probably about a week or two for me to really start noticing. And I got the same results. But like you said, the convenience, you know, that took five, 10 minutes of preparation, organic materials, you know, mixing it up and doing it where I just only pop that can, drink it on the way to the gym and I'm good. And it's uh, it's just really taking that little extra time. And that ripples into healthy eating all the way through for people that watch their New Year's stuff. It's just that little extra effort goes a lot further than you realize. Here's something. Our Here's our, a lot of people... our society as a whole, and, and give me one second, let me finish yep. right. Yep. Our society as a whole, we are a microwave society as oh, a whole. Yeah. So, so every single thing you. that we do directly has to be right now, right now. Like uh, people who eat bacon, and I laugh at this all the time. You're supposed to cook your bacon either a cast iron skillet or you prepare it in the oven. There are people who put bacon in a microwave. <laughs> I can actually go give you a brand right now out of the fridge that tastes just as good. It blows my mind every time I eat it. And I do. And I laughed the first time I got it. My buddy showed it to me. And I was like, dude, are you serious? And yeah. uh, it, it took like six brands, but this one is good. But yeah, no, I, it's still not the same. Hey, not look, at how, look at how lazy we are. Yeah, I no, I agree. Well, if you think about it, how many times, Joe, because I know I in the past have done it, have you went out of your way or went searching at the store for an energy drink? So you might have like on the way home. Asked, I mean, I've done it with you. <laughs> exactly. So mm -hmm. my point being is, is if you actually took the extra time in the times that you went out of your way to get an energy drink and added it up, it would probably be about the same amount of time you take to make that healthy smoothie. And Absolutely. you know what I mean? Like the amount of, the, like, point. so it's, it, it's different because in the moment, like at the exact time of use, the difference is this to actually activity you're putting in the activity. You're just putting in the activity at a different time. So it seems like it's not connected. It seems like it's not the same time. Absolutely. Very good point. Very. Uh, that was a great point. I have, I think that summed up a lot on that one. Uh, I 
I get one a week, so you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the ginger Thor of like Spider Man, Spider Man. Everybody gets one type yeah. of thing. <laughs> I get one a week. Yeah, I That's get one. Funny. I, you, you get one. Uh, how do you feed your mind and body? And this is a question for everybody for the last question of the day. How do you take and feed your mind and body? I'm going to actually have Joe go, Jerome, then Gerald. Um, so for me, like I said, I'm unfortunately back on the pre-workout uh, kick, but I only strictly do Celsius. Um, I really like their ingredients and they're very natural. There's not a lot of ingredients. And I only now will have that pre-workout on days I work out. And days I do not, I do not have the pre-workout. I'll maybe do, they have like a, kind of like the Delight Cafe pack everybody sees on Brandon's. They have like little packs like that or a can and it's equivalent to one cup of coffee. I'll maybe do that. But on the weekend, I try not to do any caffeine. And, and for me, that's been a battle uh, in health and wellness for a long time is cutting back on caffeine. And uh, as of lately, actually, Brandon, since I got COVID and survived that, I went back to smoothies and been doing like two or three smoothies a day and really trying to get back on that grind. Because like Gerald said, when you really think about it, you're at least being active while you're making it. And by the time I go in the store, get the ingredients and I go well, online, order the energy drinks or go to the store and get those, it really equates the same amount of time. One's just a lot healthier. So and then, you know, healthy foods. I do my CBD nightly, which is true um, with some other stuff. But. I try to be overall very conscious nowadays, now that I am getting older too, of what goes in and out of my body. So uh, it all starts in like little steps along the way. So, and caffeine for me has always been a battle. So that's something that I've getting into 2021 have been more aware of. And that's why I love that we're doing this because I got to learn a lot from Jerome, some from Gerald, some from Brandon, some from the articles that we researched for you guys. So um, I will pass the torch to uh, what was the next one you wanted, Jerome or Gerald, Brandon? Uh, Jerome. Jerome, you have the floor, sir. Well, when you say feeding the body, for the most part, I don't have like any regulations on what to eat. I get it in. <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah, at least you're honest. by that is what I understand by that is we're invited over for a barbecue soon as the weather warms up. Oh yeah, that's that's easy money. That 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 ain't no problem, man. Uh, we have guys over. Don't uh, what was it? The Browns game the other night. We had guys there. The difference is um, there's something different about guys who participate in combat sports. Have you seen them eat? Uh, oh man, oh. I've, I've seen it. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I mean, I fed him after a fight once. <laughs> I no, I don't. I don't mind. I never mind, and and that's the the principle. So everything would always be taken care of for our guys and gals. That's never the issue. But it is incredible to watch a human consume their weight. <laughs> it's, fun. it's fun to do. It's fun yeah. to do. <laughs> but it's, 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 as far as the mind, for the most part, I'm a reader. Um, I still do because I'm on the road a lot. I listen to audiobooks because I'm forced, but there are different days where I'm playing chess. Chess is always different. I still go meet with some of my elders in the community just so they can give me the beating that I need so I mm -hmm. never get too arrogant yep. in um, I love playing, playing chess. Um, also, dealing with the guys and the young ladies in combat sports have really um, to be honest, they've actually contributed to the relationships that I have with my own children. You know, just seeing things from a different perspective. A lot of these young men, um, they they suffer from different traumas because to to want to be in the hurt business, it's it's more than just money. Like I explained to a young man the other day, like, so you want to go out and hurt people? And he was like, well, no, I just want to, I want to one day be champion. I said, but you're missing the, the, the element of it. That's really most important. You're going to be harmed. And the potential of you harming someone is sitting right there on the table. I've watched Gerald fight. You got to be, <laughs> you got to be willing to do those things. And no, I'm not saying that Gerald has a trauma, I'm just saying that when you speak to a lot of these young men and these young women, they're carrying that baggage consistently and, it, and they're able to express and get some of those things off of them within, whether it be the square, on the mat, the jujitsu, the wrestling, those types of things. So I'm a reader of books. I'm a reader of people. I'm a reader of 
the atmosphere. I read nature. So I'm a reader. That's what I do. So before I jump over to Gerald, what would be a book you recommend our, our watching video and podcast people that are going to listen? What should be a book that would they should read slash I will find the audio book for for free? To <laughs> for free. <laughs> Right, I right. share but, it. I, yeah, I, well, no, so, really well. the, the microwave society. You right. You don't even. <laughs> that's like that's like stealing someone's music. You you don't want to. <laughs> well, I agree with you, but it's on audiobooks, and I think if we get more and more people understanding why reading is such an essential thing mm-hmm. through the audiobooks, I'll find every every book you want for free, whether it's YouTube or something else. I will find it. And then let people listen to it. And Gerald's shown me four minute, four minute books. It tells you all about a book in four minutes. And then, you know, if you want to like listen to it, read it, whatever. I think if we provide people, it's already out there. Okay. Uh And when uh it connects with you and like, like, look, when it connects with you, you two are making jokes. (laughs) You're you're like a kid that just got in trouble. You're like, (laughs) Yeah, you're like, oh no! Like, how do I get myself out of this one? It's a quick four minute. It's not the whole book. Just to see if you like it. Uh, no, remember, like- remember when we used to burn uh, CDs and DVDs back in the day, so we wouldn't have to go to the movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. 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 That's stealing. That's stealing. I, I agree. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. He's just the middleman between the 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 artist and the stealers. He's just. And- and, and and look, look, yeah. look, Gerald Juracopoulos. Yeah. Gerald Juracopoulos. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. I've, no, been, on, like I, I've been on mute the whole time. Like I'm just saying words. I can't hear right, anything. Right. Right. And, and look at Joe. He's stuck because he drove you guys to the store. He had no idea you were going to rob it. <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right. For everybody, <laughs> I will not put up for anybody to listen to now. No, it, no, right. No, it's all good. Uh, I believe that the 48 Laws of Power, oh, uh, yeah. uh, which I think is a simple one. Um, I, I think that's a great one. Anytime you read the 48 Laws of Power, you, 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 you cannot just read it. It's not just a reading book. It's a context book. Yep. It's a, it's a yep. situational allegory of different things that are happening consistent, consistently. So when you read the 48 Laws, you you take your notes. Some people don't take notes and there will be situations that will remind you of this situation. You're supposed to, you're, you're, when, you, when you're reading, there's something that's missing. And of course, I don't want to be long winded. But when you're reading, you're supposed to be applying something. Yes. Right. You're, we're, no, we're not applying information. A lot of people just want to say, hey, I read that book or I read 500 books. Well, what exactly did you apply? Who did you help? How did you help? So I think that that's important. So when I say 48 laws of power, of course, it's not going to make you a general in an army. It's not going to it's not going to make you the baddest shogun in Asia. It's not going to do that. But it, it's supposed to help you get perspective <laughs> with situations. Well, and here's the thing, knowledge, knowledge, like gained without being applied is useless. You know, I mean, I, if I, if I, if I just spent the rest of my life reading every book, I would know a lot, but how much would I have accomplished other than just reading a lot of books? Hey, Jerome, if I was to give away a box of CBD right now for everybody watching, I'm just going to need them to write a comment in the books and I will spin a wheel on the screen and everybody can win a free, anybody can win a free box of CBD. I don't want to give any of my soap away. So do you have a soap you'd be willing to mail the winner to? Absolutely. That would be, I Absolutely. love it. Perfect. So I would, I, would, I would directly get the uh, Sports Bar Combat. It has peppermint oh, on, and tea tree essential oils. That's a bet. Boom. There we go, guys. Anybody that oh, would like to Thank you guys. a free box of CBD and a black Ro- uh, petals from a black rose soap. I keep wanting to say a black rose soap. I don't know why. I had it. Kiss from a rose. That's what you're doing. Well, I wanted to sing it the whole time. Kiss Please from don't. a rose. No, 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 no. Okay. That's, that's Not, I, am, I enjoy the song. I enjoy the song. My dad loves it. I grew up listening to it. So don't ruin it, Brandon. <laughs> so, 
We will be giving a, a soap away, the sports soap from Petals from a Black Rose and a box of CBD. Write your name in the comments. Uh, Maritza, Shell, and Drew, I know the three of you have already – I'm writing your names down so I don't forget them. Ed, the three of you have already been writing, so I'm getting you guys in there. Um, I have Dr I have Joe and Gerald's name in there already as well, and Jerome, I threw you in there too. Um, if anybody else wants anything, it wants to get in there, please let me know. I threw a couple extra names in there, like my niece, to make this um, interesting to see if she, because if she wins, I'm just going to give it to her. Because I make sure you put Brian in there, Lawrence up top, Fernando. Oh, Fernando, good job. Keep yelling names at me, guys. Drew. Uh, yep. Brian. Okay, Drew. Brian. Uh, Lawrence. Shelly. Not, 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 not Gerald. They can't have – and Drew, they can't have this soap, dude. They can't be a part of it. They got yeah, this Yeah, as soap. soon as I said that, I was like, we already got that stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah. I want to you <laughs> You don't need it. If you're still watching right, if you're still watching right now, you can earn yourself in the in the office in the studio. I love that. Give me that. I'll pull out apron for a bar of soap drum. I I could Google that address. I got you. Yeah. No. Hey, I man, don't I have hair too. You could save a hair net. You know me. I'm gonna need to put on the beard though. Beard net. Yeah. yeah beard you're, net. you're gonna wear a hair net, guy. <laughs> All right, guys, if there's anybody else, this is your last chance. I'm going to be pulling it up in a second. We're going to spin for a winner, and they get a box of CBD, 30 packets to, of odorless, colorless. Don't forget about me, Fernando. I already got you in there, my friend. Boom. Ready, guys? It's going to show up on the screen. I got everybody's name in here, it looks like. You did. I, it, I, it, I don't think anything's missing, and spin. I had a good time on the show, man. Pleasure How having the you. hell did you win? <laughs> it's my destiny. <laughs> Why did you put his name in there? I said that. <laughs> All right, well, hey, hey, my destiny. The box of CBD. Spin it for yourself. <laughs> it's my destiny. The funny part is how I put him in there so our names would be in there to show you before the show. And I was Games and I skipped Joe's and Jer and Jerobes. And I'm like, I didn't even think of it. I'm like, they're not going to win. They have a less chance of winning. I'm removing you now and respinning. <laughs> it's my <laughs> destiny. <laughs> hey, Jerome, what's your wife's name? Lushell. L A S C H E L L E. Lushell. Yeah, we're redoing that spin. We're redoing yo, don't, it. Yo, don't put her in for the win, man. I think she's only got a couple packets left anyway. She's got to start getting her own stuff from Gerald off of her own merit. <laughs> and we're going to spin. Put her name in there. Nope. <laughs> Rigged. Did you say rigged? Yep. All right. You know what? Just because you did that. Look at that. And hey, Brandon, get Grammarly. It's free. Excuse my French, but how, how the fuck don't we know how to spin for a random name right? Because <laughs> I put a bunch of luck. other names in. This is our luck. That's why. Yeah. You know? And then your wife counts now. I'm going to put Kelly because she joined the one time. Take Shell out. Now I Shell, you're, you're forgetting somebody in our oh, chat. Is that someone? Is that someone from? The, uh, yeah, she she was commenting today. Isn't that Lachelle though? Oh, Maurizia. Yep. I think Shell and Lachelle is the same person, Brandon. <laughs> is that what happened? I told you, it's my destiny. Yeah, he's just gonna keep winning. <laughs> just said it about the CBD delight, delight cafe, and we're gonna. It's go. my destiny. Oh, that was funny. You know what? I'm going to write – no, I'm not writing any. Is that everybody's name that we can put in there, guys, that's actually paying attention? <laughs> that's Damn. here. Oh, this is yeah, fun. Yeah, your man. name is – boom. Last spin. It's going to be little man. 
Hey, Brian. Brian. Brian won, and he commented. So we're going to send a prize to Lachelle as a thank you for being on today, Jerome, and being a wonderful like partner with this and all this. Uh, Jerome, you did a lot. Everybody go check out Petals from a Black Rose. I 100% like am excited to start using the soaps. I didn't even like open them until I knew you were coming on, so that way I could have a genuine reaction. Um, I appreciate you representing the Ass Club. I will be making sure to squeeze my ass every which way we can. And at the end of the day, guys, have a great one. I appreciate I made it! Oh, I did! Okay, I'll, watch. I'll go. <laughs> you guys... Uh-huh.